All right, let's get started. And um, my name is Tao He. I'm a software, in, software engineer in Google. I need teams to improve the startup latency for machine learning workloads. I also need team to provide the GPU runtime in GKE. And today we are going to talk about uh, reducing AI job code start time from 15 minutes to one minute. And first we'll talk about the code start problem. The definition is here, a code start is uh, when you schedule a pod and to a node, and when the node doesn't have that container image. During this process, the container will, the container runtime will pull and we pull the image from a remote container registry and download and pack that uh, container image to the local disk, which will consume some CPU and networking and storage, which also takes time to finish. And this graph is a uh, high level, like when you schedule a port, and each step, it will require some resource. For example, in the infra side, you may need a node pool in GKE, you may need an instance group in AWS, and when you don't have enough node, for the same machine type, it will trigger like auto scaling and to get enough like CPU, GPU, or memory. And when it comes to the container runtime, the workload part, and if the container image does not exist there, it will trigger the image pool and it will pull the image to the local and pack it. And then the container can start from that container image. And in the end, you need the AI model to present and to start the machine learning workload. In this talk, we will focus on the container image pool because that is the most time consuming part. And when you have like 30 gigabyte container image, the image pool can take up to 15 minutes. And it's a super long time to start a application. And the problem get, uh, get even worse when you running a training job because if you hit some error, you need to do error recovery from the last track point. At that point, you also need to schedule a group of pods onto a new node, and then it will delay further due to the code start latency. First, we will uh, go to a deep dive into why the image pool is so slow for AI workloads? Because AI container images are very large. They are uh, usually four, not, uh, larger than four gigabytes. And why are those AI container images so large? Because those base layers are very large. And why are those base layers are so large? Because AI machine learning GPU libraries inside those layers, they are very large. And then comes the next question, why not place in the libraries onto the host and put it as part of the disk image? It is because the application or the framework, they have version dependency on the library. So each uh, kind of like TensorFlow or PyTorch, they have a specific uh, version dependency on the CUDA. And container, container actually solves this problem, the dependency problem by putting all the libraries into the container. And you can run two different pods side by side on the same node and they're using different libraries. And the next question is, can user reduce the size of libraries? Actually, no, because user, like all, not all of those libraries are open sourced and building them may not customizable for the size. And those libraries, are required because they are hard dependency for using GPUs. And if, we, if you take a look on the right side, and this is a node. Inside of the node, there's a pod. Inside of the pod, there's a container. And inside of the container, there are multiple layers. And from our investigation, like the CU DNN or CUDA libraries in those layers are extremely large, like each of them is four gigabytes. But the GPU driver that on the host, they are relatively very small. It's only 22 megabyte or 
the driver kernel module is 51 megabyte. So this is even before when we open source to the uh, module. Now it's even smaller. But the libraries, they are very large. So we did an uh, investigation to look like uh, investigate does it apply to all the containers? We are using this uh, tool called Dive. It's a great tool. You can see each layers and what uh, files in each layers, what's the size of them. And all the pre-built machine learning containers from different providers, they are sharing the same pattern, the QDA layers or CUDNN or PyTorch. They are all very large than applications without GPU. So that's a problem. And here's the requirements for our solutions. The requirements need us to provide solutions for uh, with speed, scalability, and cost efficiency. Uh, for the speed, we need to utilize higher throughput provided by the disk or the networking. For the scalability, we want a solution to apply, we want a solution applies to larger container image. And ideally, even when the container size increase, the image pool can be skipped or the image pool type can be constant. And moving on to the third one, it, quite, it is quite possible all the nodes in the cluster pull in the same image at the same time it will use up the egress networking limit for the mm, container registry. So we want a solution also can solve this problem. And in the end, it's cost efficiency and no actual cost in building because like technically you can solve all the problem by pre provisioning all the nodes, all made up and download everything you needed and put it in standby and all the, questions, all the problems solved by using extra budget. But that, that is not practical. You, you still want to save, uh, save money in, still, uh, in the training workloads. And here is the design space. Given the background of large container image, large number of, large number load, uh, large number of nodes in the cluster, and to avoid repeat the image pool or reduce the image pool latency on each node. The design space, there are two categories. The first one is cluster-wide solution. It's quite straightforward. You want, you want to put those images, create a mirror, create a P2P algorithm inside the cluster much closer to the nodes. And then the, when the nodes do image pool, it's faster. And But our talk, uh, our focus of this talk is focusing on the per load solution inside of the container runtime. Because when you, when you take a look on the container idea, all the containers are downloaded to each node repeatedly. And you want to, like the first impression is why do I need to repeat that again and again? And so that's why we take a look inside of the container runtime, especially inside the container D. And here comes our, our solutions. The first solution is preloading container images through additional disk. And the goal is to skip the, completely skip the container image pool and get a faster code start. There are three steps of it. First, you build the disk image with all the preloaded containers inside it. And step two, you create the load pool or instance group from this disk image. And when the, all the nodes created, it's coming when containers container is preloaded. Step three is when you schedule ports as a user, like you don't need to change anything. It will automatically skip the container image pool and you will get the faster code start. And I would take a closer look into each step. Step one, it is downloading and unpacking containers and create a disk image. So because if you don't do this, this step will be done 
at each node, like it's the same process on each node without any difference. So that's why we do this ahead of time and prepare it for all the nodes, do it only once. Step two, you, when you create the nodes, you input the disk image. And as you can see, this node is coming with additional disk. This disk is coming with preloaded containers. And out of the box, those containers are ready to be used. At step three, we modify the container D by plugging a snapshot. So this snapshot is able to read both disks. One is from the boot disk, it, it is there uh, before, and another is the disk when the preloaded the containers. It, this is our solution. And with this approach, the container runtime is able to read both multiple disks and reading the container cache from it and save the like, latency for, for the start of time. Another highlight here is container D will reduce cache by layers. So if containers they are sharing the same base layers, it can benefit the port side latency for those containers. And you can just put a base containers like the library container or the framework container onto this additional disk. It will benefit all the applications using the sh uh, shared uh, libraries if you don't change those basic uh, layers. So you make minor changes on the application, for example, changing some parameter, changing some uh, mega parameter, and you can still benefit from this approach. And about the results, the predicted results, the red line is what it was before. The blue line, it is this solution. The comparison is the latency for image pool to the port ready. And as you can see, our solution is more scalable when the container, container image size. Like even when you have larger image size, it is still a constant time to get the Pod ready. The the inside the key inside behind is when you create the disk from the disk image, it is actually reusing the same data blocks underneath. It's a distributed storage, and it does not require data copy per disk creation. It's, it is when you create a disk, it's just a pointer to the under, underneath data blocks. And by the way, uh, the data replication gets scaled up when you increase the usage on the disk, not by creating more disk. So that's the key insight for this approach. And that's the first approach. Then we'll come to the second solution. It is motivated by our investigation into container D. And we did a lot of benchmarking or uh, observation inside container D. There are two steps, two phases in container D. First is fetch the container image. So container, container image is stored as a layer by layer and compressed packages on the container registry. So the download, Download in Connect is in parallel, downloading all the layers at the same time, putting it into the disk. And the phase two is unpack each layers and create the snapshot, which is a file system inside of the container. And the unpacking part is single threaded in container D and also the decompression part. This is very uh, important. And the question is, which step in the image, uh, image pool is a bottleneck? So the answer is, the unpacking is the bottleneck, especially for large containers with more layers. You can imagine like you have 30 gigabyte. The downloading and unpacking requires like 
networking, CPU, and disk to, 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 place the, to create the containers file system, all the files, all the folders. And question two is, is it limited by CPU or networking or storage? From our, um, from our investigation, in most cases, it's limited by the slow disk operations. And that's because all the cloud disk implementation is almost based on the block storage technology. And this technology is actually a distributed storage thing. It will cross networking, and you're publishing the throughput for that disk. And the default throughput limit is very low. And even you like increase it, it may not benefit because those block storage can handle more parallel I/O operations, but it will consequence relatively higher latency than local disk. And it has uh, pros and cons, but for the container disk implementation for unpacking, it does not benefit from that uh, high I/O ops. So in order to utilize all the throughput in the block storage, you require a very deep I/O queue depth for the system call of I/O ops to achieve, like to get the maximum throughput limit provision for your disk. And our solution is summarized in this slide. So personally, Kinetic download everything in parallel, but I'm packing them layer by layer because there's a dependency between layers. Some files that are overlapping between layers, you need to override or remove uh, layer by layer. So it's possible the last layer can delete the files in the previous layer. So that's why the community has a, a sequential order for the unpacking. And it needs to adopt a lot of file system types. It's, it is another reason. And for our proposal, we propose unpacking each layer to different folders in parallel. And we build the snapshot by using lightweight file system operations like move or rename or creating um, mount. And as you can see, when you parallelize all the unpacking jobs, you can get a benefit from the, uh, for the latency. And this improvement is more obvious when you have larger containers, when you have more, uh, more layers for the containers. Uh, for example, if you have more layers, you can run more parallel jobs to unpack in them. And typically, all the AI and machine learning workloads, their containers have over 30 image layers. And the predicted results from this one is the red line is still the, the previous uh, approach. The blue line is the proposed solution. And when you increase your, when you upgrade your disk throughput, like in GKE, it's upgrading the disk size. You pay, you pay more money and you get more benefits by the upgrade. But the previous approach doesn't do that. That's because of the single threaded unpacking. So when this approach from our benchmark, the image pool for six gigabyte container can be reduced from over, 20, uh, over 230 seconds to 40 seconds. And this is solution two. And one last solution is a, a minor one. It's already merged into Kubernetes. And we implemented the maximum parallel image pools across different pods. And when this parameter, we can control and enable the image pool 
between different ports running on the same node. And this can also improve start latency for multiple ports running on the same node. And that's the end of this presentation. Uh, if you have any question, you can ask from that mic. Hi. That's really good. Uh, great talk. Uh, really good improvement performance. Um, for solution number two on unpacking them parallelly, you said you built a snapshotter. Is that snapshotter available for anyone using Containerd to do that? A uh, solution two doesn't have a snapshotter. Like it is improving the curl of the Containerd. Oh, it's part of Containerd, so Containerd by default will do uh, this. It is a to be. It is a proposal in Containerd, and okay. it's not yet implemented. Okay, cool. Thanks. So my question is also follow up. So for solution one, where you modify Containerd to read the cache layers from an attached disk as opposed to the from a local disk. Is yeah. that change also merged to container D or is that to be implemented? Or it is uh, it is very specific for the each cloud. And we can share the idea, but like the implementation is inside the GKE and it really depends on the implementation of the persistent disk in Google. Okay, is it turned on by default on GKE now? Or? Not yet. We are going to launch it uh, end of this year and next year. Okay, thank you. Are you planning to contribute the change to other hyperscale to the community, to Container D community, or there are no plans for that? Um, we will open source the image building part, but no, we don't have a plan to open source the snapshot. But it, it only applies to G, uh, Google's approach. Okay, thank you. Hello. Um, so for solution two, have you tried different compression formats for the layers uh, and seeing if that has any effect? Or I guess like for the image as well? Yeah, it's a great question. And I think it's a different dimension. And we've tried the ZSTD algorithm. And it do improve a little bit for, for the image pool. Cool. Thank but you. Still, it requires downloading and unpacking. Hi, my question is about uh, solution one here. So in this image, you're not including the time to create the node pool with a disk from the image, which makes sense. But I'm wondering if you were to factor that in, like in a kind of cloud setting where you're provisioning nodes dynamically, is there still a perceived benefit to the first step of building the disk image with the preloaded containers? And the question is, uh, why not include the node provisioning, right? Or mostly just like, even if you were to include the node provisioning, would there still be a benefit to this pre-creation of the, of the disk image? Uh, yes, because the idea here is if you, the, the node creation time doesn't change, but when this approach, you create the node, the node coming with periodic containers out of a box. So there's no extra time cost in it but you can benefit from the cache. I see, okay, yeah, I think the one maybe question mark I had was around like, if this was ultimately, like if most of the cost was still coming from the download step, in which case pre-building the image versus downloading it at the at runtime wouldn't make a difference, but you're saying it, it would. Uh, there is no, I mean, let me think about it. So the node provisioning doesn't change, right? The node is still here. The machine type is still the same. But the provisioning disk is super fast if you already have the disk image in that location. So you don't need to copy the data. It just, uh, the cloud, on the cloud, you create a disk, it's just a pointer to the underneath data. So it's super fast. It's like within a few seconds. I see. So there's no actual data copying during the creation process. I see. But like, what if your image lived in like, 
you know, um, as an AMI in Amazon or something like that. We're potentially having to download it into the cluster. Yeah, it's the same. What, I'm sorry, what was that? Uh, AMI is, it can also benefit from this. Okay, cool. Well, thank you. Yeah. Uh, nice talk. This is Yuan Chen from Apple. Uh, I have uh, two questions. The first question about the cost, yeah, this first solution and preloading or prefetching the uh, image or snapshot to additional and uh, disk, will this increase the cost? It will and increase a little bit. It's uh -huh. relatively almost doesn't exist. So mm -hmm. it's just a disk image with that size. Mm -hmm. And you attach a disk to each node. The disk will cost some money, but when you run machine learning workloads, the GPU and the machine, they are most like major part of the cost in the building. Okay. Adding one disk is relatively small part. Mm -hmm. I, I think uh, <coughs> someone may have some comments on that. We are trying to merge that fix into container D. And yeah, that's it. Any other questions? Yeah, so regarding the cost, yeah, just this slide. And uh, I don't quite understand how does the, um, the parallel unpacking reduce the cost. So what's the baseline you, you compare there, right? So not only improve the performance, reduce the latency, but also reduce the cost. Can you elaborate a little how it reduces the cost? The parallel unpacking, yeah, the right. It one. does not reduce cost. It's the cost is the same. Uh, but to your next slide, I think you show and uh, right the blue line and uh, not only oh. and improve the performance, also the cost, right? Sorry, uh, uh, I need to clarify on this graph. The oh. right side is only applies to the yellow line, and the left side uh, y axis applies to the red and blue line. So it does not reduce cost, it reduces the latency. Okay, okay. I and think. when you increase the cost on the disk, you can see more improvement on the new approach for the, for the latency comparing to the right line. Okay, okay, so that's got how it. how I read this graph. Okay, the second one is about, uh, do you think this prefetch, preloading, and uh, approach can work for the cluster auto scaling if I want to increase and add additional new nodes and provision it? And uh, so how, how, how should I apply this approach to that? Uh, it applies to auto scaling. Mm -hmm. And that's a great question. And it's an API on the load pool or instance group. So when all the new nodes get created, they were coming up with the disk attached. So it's okay. the same nodes, and just adding more nodes with more disks. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Hey, I just had a quick question about how do you manage the life cycle of your disk image? So you mentioned that the disk image is pre-baked with the model. What happens when you want to update the model and what's your process around it? Yeah, that's a great question. I think it's a limitation for this approach. It's not that easy to change the disk image. You need to build it again with a new version of CUDA, a new version of uh, PyTorch to get this cache template. And every time you upgrade, you need to upgrade the disk. But it happens in the building time. You can easily integrate with, the, with your CI/CD workflow to recreate the disk image. And it can be part of the infra team's responsibility. So we, we have a clear uh, separation for the responsibility. Thanks. And, and the, the application team, they don't need to change their containers. That makes sense. The other question I had is around the unpacking that you showed on a slide. Um, 
so you mentioned that you're making the proposed changes in the container D in how you unpack them in parallel. Um, is the output after the proposed change going to be the same, or is there some <coughs> like after uh, take uh, after using the proposed change? Um, is there another any other trade-offs that the application will have? It is the same, and yeah, that's it. It is the same. Okay, thanks. And we're running out of time. I think we can answer one more question. Okay, <laughs> okay, I'm the lucky one, I guess. So yeah, thanks. A very good topic here. I just uh, have one question, maybe just out of curiosity, like uh, thinking about a uh, disaggregated storage situation, remote storage backend. Uh, what do you see like these techniques here, parallel preloading, or uh, like? Uh, uh, we are a fact in in this uh, scenario, like where where it have, or have you tested that? Like, uh, uh, can you clarify on um, which which compilation I should test? No, just just for the the whole server, like the node, the back end or the the node is using remote storage, mm -hmm. and uh, for, uh, the the image is kind of already there. Uh, mm, to compare between, uh, you need to pull some of the registry. Yeah, we don't need to pull it again because it's a format in container D and it is comp compatible between different container D versions. So, will it still need that uh, amount of time? Oh, sorry, can I come again? Uh, we are we are it still need uh, that amount of time. Like even we are using a remote storage. For oh, to clarify, all the disk in cloud they are remote storage, so we don't change that. It's still the same. Okay, got it. Thank you. So you can imagine all the system calls to the disk will be converted into a API call to the back and distributed system. Like you create a file file on the on the system call and it is actually created from the back end of a distributed system. Oh thank you. Uh, one uh, last question. <laughs> yes. Yeah we are running out of time but I'm the last I believe. Yes uh, I have uh, two questions like for regarding the first approach have you tried with the NFS like protocol instead of iSCSI, it seems like you are attaching every disk from the uh, to the node. So I think instead of using iSCSI, like uh, using the NFS instead of the iSCSI, you will mount the disk uh, from anywhere and you can reduce a lot of time to do it. I mean, we don't need to take the snapshot per like external disk space. Uh, can you come again by using what? Like a NFS, like a, for instance, we can m mount some kind of NFS storage instead of the external disks per each node. Yeah, I think it is uh, it is feasible for on-prem environment, but for I don't know. I haven't tried that. Uh, but for instance, a AWS, they are supporting EFS, which is the NFS file storage disk space. So I think it's, it would be better to use the NFS storage, which is the, like, it's equivalent to the AWS EFS. I think uh, GK... Oh, I know that one. And yes, in Google, we also have similar approach, but the, the disk implementation is faster than FS in, in Google because it is a native disk implementation inside this cloud. And we, are, we have done a lot of like, improvements for that approach. But so, NFS, it can also apply. And there are other approach which, which is like GS views can also apply, but it's still slower than this one. So it like for AWS use case, by NFS, which is the EFS, could be faster than your approach in step one. I think the idea can apply, but I haven't tested that yet in yep. AWS. Yeah, cool. Thank you. And uh, your enhancement, which Kubernetes version will be available with 
with this enhancement. Is the latest Kubernetes will contains uh, these features or? I think I'm testing with 126. Oh, good. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I know we're running out of time, so I hope this is a quick question. So, uh, my question is: When do what events will trigger the image downloading for the in your first option? So you said you have a disk that's dedicated for image pooling, right? But what will trigger the image pooling? Because that should happen before the pod was scheduled, right? Y yes. So the question is, uh, does the image pool happen before the, the, the token? Yeah, before the part scheduling, right? Um, actually, I, if the question is, does the image creation happens before the port scheduling, the answer is yes, it happens before. Like, you know what to deploy, you need to prepare for it. Like, prepare the infra for the workloads. So what's the event that triggers that? Is that uh, because the pod YAML gets stored to the ETCD and then there's a uh, controller that watch the pod controller? Actually watch those? Oh, the actual workflow will be more like the application team tell the infra team, I need those containers to be preloaded. Please oh, so put them into the con infra. So it's a separate process. It's a human yeah. manual process, not a automatic process. It's more like CI/CD process. Oh, okay. Thank you. Great. And thanks. Thanks, everyone, for joining this.